Hello everyone and welcome back to The Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and we're back with another Total War Warhammer video. We were gonna go back to the usual content today, however, after our Clan Rictus mod, a few people got in contact in regards to a Clan Pestilence mod that I just had to know about. For those not aware, I'm a massive fan of Clan Pestilence, both on the tabletop and in Total War Warhammer, and yes, they play very well mechanic-wise, but are lacking in a few things here and there. Alluvian's Liber Bubonicus Cookbook is a mod which updates Clan Pestilence. This changes around some buildings, some mechanics, and adds a wealth of new units. Everything added in is to give it some more flavour in terms of a pure Clan Pestilence army. For those not aware, Clan Pestilence is one of those major clans which unfortunately did not have that many unique units. This was not just in Total War Warhammer, but also in Warhammer Fantasy Battles. So if you wanted to field a fully Clan Pestilence army, you weren't really able to. However, this mod changes just that. So let's jump into the campaign map and show you guys what you're expecting to see. Now just for the purpose of this video, I'm setting the campaign to easy and easy battles. This is so I can just get to the mechanics that I want to show off without wasting too much time. But let's jump right in. Your campaigns will start as normal. Indeed, this is not a complete overhaul, but rather adding some flavour and tweaking a few things. Simplicity is key here. We could look at mods which completely overhaul Clan Pestilence, but then again, that would make things way too complicated. The first thing you will notice is that the Clan Pestilence landmark building has been radically changed. Now it's got three tiers and a wealth of new bonuses. The number 13 in terms of bonuses is a reoccurring theme for this mod, and in all honesty that's how every mod should be. Each tier unlocks specific things, be it very basic infantry such as Plague Thralls or Clan Pestilence Clan Rats, war machines such as the Plague Claw Catapult and a unit variant of the Plague Furnace, or even unique heroes. Every unique modded unit has been given a Clan Pestilence look and feel. In truth, some of the units are inspired by others, such as the heroes being inspired by assassins or even warlords, the Plague Torch Bearers being inspired by the Poison Wing Globadiers, or the Plague Deacons, which are a lord choice that are heavily inspired by both Skrulk and Plague Priests. But at least now you have a proper Lord choice for a Clan Pestilence theme army and don't have to rely on Graciers or basic Warlords. If you're trying to keep to a theme, the building literally has everything that you need. You won't need to build anything else. Basic infantry, war machines, spellcasters and even higher tier infantry units. This building literally has it all for you. There is also another new building in this section known as the Bibliotheca Bubonicus. This is a free tiered building and the purpose of it is to provide general campaign buffs. Now please bear in mind that the cost to maintain this building is rather steep and gets horrendously expensive in its third and final level. However, the pros more than outweigh the cons and believe me, the plague it generates when it's finally built can be quite devastating to your enemy factions nearby. As far as I'm aware, that is it when it comes to unique buildings. There might be a unique Skaven Blight landmark, but I must admit I was having way too much fun annoying the lizards that I didn't make way to Skaven Blight during my own personal campaign. I'm going to carry on playing through this campaign and I'm going to stop at any place that may be of interest to you. Here we have a basic army very early on into the campaign. I started off recruiting stuff as soon as I could and removed the basic clan rats and slave rats as I felt like they were no longer needed. There's not a lot of unique stuff here, in fact only two units, but you're able to pause and see their stats if you wish, and I just wanted to highlight how good these models look aesthetically. They fit with the clan pestilence theme rather nicely. It's been a decent number of turns and we've upgraded our main building fairly well. A few new units have been unlocked, but we'll showcase them soon enough. The main thing I wanted to show right now was the fact that we've unlocked a new hero, the Plague Chanter. Its traits seem to be custom made, so I didn't really go too much into that, but instead I wanted to show off its stats. This is your melee alternative to a Plague Priest. Sometimes you want a melee based hero, which isn't a spellcaster, and the Plague Chanter himself does that very well. A few turns later and we have a sizable army. There's not really that much diversity, but everything you need is right here. Basic meat shields such as clan rats and slaves, some artillery, a diverse cast of heroes, more elite forms of melee units, which is your basic plague monks, and finally some plague torch bearers. 
as stated before, these are a ranged unit, very similar to the Poison Wing Globideers, but interestingly enough, they also have the Siege Attacker trait. I'm not sure if that's some sort of bug or not, but it seems a bit overpowered. The last unique hero is the Reaper of Woe, a very similar style to a Glass Cannon Assassin, very powerful in melee combat, however if it gets shot it will get shredded to pieces. There's nothing spectacular in terms of skills, but it can do damage when needed. Believe me, I've used this and yeah, it works really well. The only big problem here is that it will get killed rather quickly if left undefended. Stick it in a unit of Plague Monks and hope it stays safe. I will note that some of its skills, those that focus around buffing itself, are incredibly overpowered. You'll notice this when you play this for yourself. The plague that will protect some of your settlements after upgrading the building to its final form will last for 13 turns, and as I've seen through experience, it spreads rather quickly. Especially if you're moving armies around into enemy territory. It obviously does not represent too well here as we're stuck in a corner of the map, but if you've got yourself a large settlement somewhere surrounded by potential enemies, this could really give you the edge against them. And finally the Plague Deacon. The Plague Deacon is your new Lord choice, which now gives you a more Clan Pestilence theme Lord. As explained before, the Plague Deacons take inspiration from the Plague Priest heroes and Lord Scroke. They aren't really unique, and interestingly enough, they can't ride Plague Furnaces, but they are quite powerful in close combat and do have the Lore of Plague. As I was playing on easy during this campaign, I wanted to do a bit of a battle showcase, where I would use all the Clan Pestilence units as a full complete but fully well-rounded army, versus a randomly generated Lizardmen army. Now I had to put this on Ultra, as the Clan Pestilence heroes, those added by the mod, are fairly expensive in multiplayer. However, the randomizer was very kind to the Lizardmen, and, well, they got a Dread Saurian, so they should be able to pack a punch. Now please bear in mind that the battle is going to show at an increased speed, but I'm going to give my final thoughts in regards to this mod. Alluvian's Liber Bubonicus Cookbook is quite an interesting mod. It gives players the ability to play a full Clan Pestilence campaign without having to buy any units from Clan Eshin, Clan Scryer or Clan Molder. The mod is still being actively updated and there are some balancing issues, but as far as I've seen in the comments for that mod page, the mod author has been tweaking stuff here and there. Yes, some units can be horrendously overpowered. As you can see, I'm not really having too much of a problem fighting against some high level Lizardmen units, but in higher level campaigns, it does become a bit difficult to recruit these higher turn units for yourself. Is it thematic? Very. Law friendly? Maybe not so much. And yes, it's lacking a little bit in balance, but is it fun? Well, simply put, yes. I am a massive fan of Clan Pestilence, so there might be a little bit of a biased opinion here. However, I do like this mod so much that the streams next week for Wednesday and Friday will be a campaign stream with this mod. It's about time my Plague Boys got a bit of love, and this is the perfect way to show it. But with that, my friends, we come to the end of our video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, might I suggest giving the video a like, or even subscribing to the channel as it really does help us out. In the description section below are various different social media links such as Facebook, Instagram and Discord where you can get in contact with a great book team. Also in the description section is an affiliate link with Element Games where you could buy loads of hobby based products not just Warhammer for 10-25% to off. Using our special link and also our special code, both of which can be found in our description, supports the channel at no extra cost to you, which we think is rather cool. A big thank you to our patrons, your support means the world to us, it's amazing that people want to help a small channel like us grow and get to a higher level of content. A special thank you to Gibraltar LUSC, Ryan Birch, Andrew Pence and Okro for subscribing to us at our fame level, you guys are super cool. And a big thank you to Edward Hule and VS Vasan for subscribing to us at our fame level. Honestly, I can't thank you guys enough for the support, it really means a lot to me, especially since all the money earned from Patreon goes directly back onto the channel. New webcam, equipment, microphones and so on. And a big thank you to all of you liking, sharing, commenting on these videos. Honestly, I'm really enjoying creating this content and chatting to all of you guys about speculation, new content and so on. It's absolutely awesome. It's been nice to make a few friends along the way. But with that my friends, thank you so much for watching once again and I shall see you all again very very soon. Have a good day.